Hello everybody, welcome to today's lesson. We are on lesson five in week three, the grade eight natural science. My name is Arifa Hafiji, and today we're gonna to have an awesome time learning about uh, fermentation in chemical reactions. But before we do, uh, um, I'm gonna remember the slide yesterday that went missing. So I'm going to recap on that slide. I'm going to start with it, what a chemical reaction is, and then we're going to proceed to fermentation in a chemical reaction. So we have the um, recap from yesterday, the missing slide that I had yesterday. So in chemical mod the in the chemical model of matter, you learned that substances basically changed physical. So you learned the physical change in in particles, like, which was basically the, the physical change of a solid, the physical change of a liquid, and the physical change of a gas. So now in the uh, in the chemical properties of the substances does not change. Okay, so um, you learned that the chemical substances do not change. It is just the state of going from a solid to a liquid to a gas that changed the state. So we're now going to look what happens when a chemical re change takes place. So now chemical reactions is basically a chemical change in substances. And this occurs mainly through a chemical reaction. So we're going to see like how uh, here in the picture that I have, we have a hydrogen, we have hydrogen, we have oxygen, and we have um, water, the product. So these are the reactants and the products that where the hydrogen atoms and the water uh, and the oxygen atoms fused together became the product. Okay, so if we had to look at, at it through chemical symbols, um, pictorial representation means that it's a picture representation. So the chemical equation basically means that we have our hydrogen atoms here, we have our oxygen atoms here, and when they bonded together through a chemical change, then um, the hydrogen atoms were attracted to the oxygen atoms and they formed a new chemical bond like we see here. Okay, so that's one way of showing a chemical bond. So now you're going to ask yourself, what is actually the definition of a chemical reaction? So a chemical reaction is basically a process that leads to chemical change of one set of chemical substances to another. So a process that leads to change, a process that leads to chemical change. So you know a chemical reaction is basically a process and it leads to chemical change from one set of subst chemical substances to another. So basically from one substance here like hydrogen and you're adding another one and then it becomes a product. So you need to know that the atoms and the molecules change. So when we have the reaction, so it's no longer a hydrogen at, um, a, a component, neither is it an oxygen, it's fused together, so the molecules will change and it becomes something like the picture that I showed you here on the right hand side where I, I squared it in a very funny way. Okay, so you're going to ask yourself, how do you know a chemical reaction has taken place? So yesterday we discussed they were you use your five senses to know how a chemical react to know whether a chemical reaction change takes place. So that was sight, you can see it happening, you can hear it happening, you can smell it happening, you can um, feel it happening, and if you touch it, you can feel feel it happening. So now there's also you can also record there's a color change. Now, if you can see, this is, you've seen it, you'll see a color change in the reaction flask. That could be a beaker or a cylinder. So the reaction flask is a 
speaker or a cylinder. Then you can see gases formed. So usually we know a gas has formed when we see bubbles. Now you must not confuse it when with boiling. So boiling is not the same as gases formed because boiling is just basically the liquid is being heated. Okay, so boiling is just a, a, a particles of matter changing from a, a liquid to a gas, but it's not new gases that has formed, like I will show you later on in the lesson while, as we proceed through it. So you can also see a solid has formed. So through chemical change sometimes, solids also form. And this happens usually, we know that the solid materials has formed when we see a sludgy or a cloudy deposit, or it forms crystals. So the solid material has formed when we see a sludgy, sludgy or cloudy deposit or crystals forming. Okay, so you see like crystals forming or you see some sort of deposit. So we also recap to recap yesterday, we said a during a chemical reaction, materials are changed into new materials with new chemical and physical properties. So when two materials reacted together, we got a new chemical with physical properties. Then materials we the materials we start with are called reactants, and the new materials that are formed are called the products. So we start with, so I'll underline it for you, we start with reactants, okay, and then when those two react together, we get new materials, and these new materials, they form products, okay. So during a chemical reaction, atoms are rearranged. So you must also know that in a chemical reaction, that the atoms rearrange, it, re rearranges itself. And this requires a chemical bond to occur. So in a chemical, be, um, uh, in the reactant, the reactants are broken up and they form a new chemical bond and this results in a product formation. So you get a new product that is formed when you react to um, uh, substances together. So now we're going to go on to today's lesson, and today's lesson is basically fermentation in a chemical reaction. So you're going to ask yourself, what does fermentation mean? What is she talking about? So I'm going to explain what fermentation is to you. This is a definition. So if they, in the test they ask you what define fermentation, you're going to say it is a metabolic process that produces chemical changes. So it is a process that produces chemical changes in organic substrates through the action of enzymes. So in biochemistry, it is, in, it is narrowly defined as the extraction of energy. So this is an easier way to say it. It's an extraction of energy from carbohydrates in the absence of oxygen. Okay, so it's a metabolic process that produces chemical reactions in organic substrates. Okay, so my screen got lost. I'm going to ask my host to find it. So, um, I'm just waiting for my screen to come back on. I'm going to try to stop sharing and then I'm going to restart again if it doesn't come on.
Okay, so we're back on. Sorry about that glitch. Okay, so now you're going to ask yourself, what does a substrate mean? So in science, a substrate are chemical species being observed in a chemical reaction. So it's the chemical substances that are observed in a reaction. So which reacts with a reagent to generate a product. So when we say it reacts with a reagent, you may ask yourself, now what does she mean by a reagent? So a reagent is a substance or compound that is added to the system to make a chemical reaction. So you add something to make a, uh, uh, to produce a chemical reaction to generate a product. Okay, so chemical reactions are not just simply that you're going to add hydrogen and oxygen atoms together to get water. You also add other things to get, um, uh, uh, add something to some certain substances to get a new product. So that's what a chemical reaction is. Okay, so I think I have a question. Okay, so let me explain um, fermentation again um, so you don't have a problem. Okay, because it is a little bit, there's, there's, there's words here it's that, that makes it very basically difficult to explain. So we say fermentation is a process, a metabolic process that produces chemical changes. So now fermentation, you must know it produces chemical changes, right, in organic substrates. Now a substrate is basically um, when, when chemical species or another thing you can say is chemical substances react with another agent to produce a product. Like for example, um, I'll give you examples later on. Um, Okay, so in this definition, you're going to say fermentation produces chemical substances, uh, chemical changes in organic substances. So it produces chemical changes in organic substrates through an action of enzymes. Okay, so as we go along uh, through the lesson, you, it will become more clearer to you as to what I'm talking about. So it is defined as an extraction of energy from carbohydrates in the absence of oxygen. That means you are taking out some oxygen in uh, from a substance and it becomes fermented. So like basically fermentation is decaying of, of something and that is mostly due to a lack of oxygen. Okay, so Let's look at this example. Have you ever forgotten that some milk or juice or juice in a bottle? Like sometimes that in if you forget to drink something in a fridge and if you left it for long, or in your school bag if you forgot to take out your your juice bottle or your milk bottle and you only realized a few days later. And I'm sure you don't, won't do it intentionally, but sometimes you know accidents happen. And then say you accidentally tasted it. And then if you tasted it, you would notice that it has a sour taste. So I don't recommend that you actually taste some, especially milk and juice that you left out of the fridge for a long time because it has bacteria in it. But if you accidentally tasted it, you would notice that it has a sour taste. Like in the cases like juice or uh, it's a bit fizzy. So it, when it's a bit fizzy, that means that it is fermenting. So your senses are warned that you shouldn't drink it. So if you take a small sip of it and if you can feel it like it's sour or a bit bitter or if it's fizzy, that means that it has fermented. Okay, that means bacteria has entered into it. So if you remember learning in grade seven that your senses of taste protects you from noticing that when food is spoiled. So in earlier, yesterday's lesson, I told you you use your five senses to know if a chemical reaction has taken place. So in the, in the 
a case of food substances, you're using your sense of taste to see if something has gone spoiled. And it's not nice to eat um, food that has gone spoiled because it has bacteria in it and then that's germs and then you have, you, you, you'll get sick. So the sour taste of mocha juice is caused by the product of form, for fermentation. Okay, so now you must also know that when bacteria enters into something and it ferments it, that you've left it outside, it's not, it's not good for you. But there are certain things that you can, that, that, are, that are processed, that are fermented, that you can have. Um, and I'll explain that to you as we go on. So now, which compounds do you think that has a sour taste? Now, compounds that, uh, or substances or foods that you can eat, you can think about it quickly, that has a sour taste. Because there are foods that you can and eat that has sour taste. So if we look at um, uh, this mask here, or if we look at yogurt, and if you look at the cheese, it naturally has a sour taste. So fermentation does not only uh, produce unwanted products. So unwanted products are the things that are left out of the fridge in terms of food, and then you can't have it. But if you keep this, it has a life expectancy, and if you keep it in the fridge, then you can consume or eat these substances. Like yogurt, buttermilk, and cheese, they are all fermented milk products. Now, in these examples, the fermentation process creates acids that give these foods a sour taste. So what happens in with the milk, the cheese, and the, uh, the buttermilk? Um, we say that the fermentation process, it creates acids. And these acids basically give a sour taste. Okay, so in milk products, we say that during fermentation process, acids are created, and this is what gives it a sour taste. So fermentation is also the process by which a variety of fruits and vegetables and grains can be used to make alcohol. So like, you know what they do with uh, when they want to make wine and stuff. So basically they take grapes, they harvest the grapes, and then they keep it in, a third, uh, in an area and they allow it to ferment. That means that they allow it to decay and then they, um, and, and many cultures, they brew alcohol drinks uh, as part of their indigenous knowledge. So they know how to brew these things and ferment it. So it makes it um, consumable for people to drink. So that means they also have to add other substances in it so it, it a lot, you, it, you can drink it. Okay, so we can say that Fermentation of growing microorganisms. Microorganisms are microbes, and microbes are basically bacteria causing fermentation. So it's a new word for you to learn as well. Microbe. So a microbe is bacteria causing fermentation. So you can say that with me. A microbe is bacteria that causes fermentation. So it's a process using microbes to produce various chemical or, pharma or pharmaceutical compounds. So when you introduce certain microbes, then you can get different chemical compounds. Or pharmaceutical compounds means basically like medication or something um, that you need to consume. So fermentation of microbes is how most biotechnology companies um, products such as produce enzymes and medicines. Okay, so what I want you to do now before we proceed is I want you to take um, a few seconds to basically think in your own mind. You can even write it down so you can understand it, what fermentation means to you and you can use the example of it and the process of fermentation. So 
while you're doing that, I'll just highlight the fermentation process creates acid to give foods a sour taste. Right, so they use microbes, which is bacteria, to pr produce different chemical substances or to produce medication. Okay, so fermentation can be bad, and then in certain substances like the, the dairy products that we have here, then it is consumable, we can have it. Okay, so Nanshla wants to know how does the bacteria go in the milk or juice if it is closed or sealed? Now, this is because of the air that is in it. It causes um, it to um, decay. Now, decay means it causes it to go bad. And um, like milk has a life expectancy of it. Now, if you don't use the milk within a few days, or if you don't drink milk or cheese um, uh, within a certain period of time, then because of the lack of oxygen, because you must know in, in the bottle, when it's sealed, there's only a certain amount of it. Now, because of that lack of oxygen in it, it can't breathe. And because it can't breathe, the bacteria will form. Like, for example, have you ever noticed that when, if, for example, you take your fruit peel, or if you take, um, uh, in, you know, nowadays, because we want to be more, we, when, you when you want to make your own compost peel, so what you basically do is you take all your um, vegetable cuttings, right? Like the, your, when you peel a salad, the skin, you take your potato skin, you take all of that, and then you go and you bury it in your garden. Now, if you don't really bury it in your garden, if you just leave it on the top of the sand, then you would see that it gets like fungi on it. And now, and then you'll see, um, Oh, so with the heat, and uh, it be, it be, it decays. So even in the fridge as well, even if you leave the um, the milk and the cheese for a while, it's going to decay because it is it only has a certain amount of life expectancy. Right. So a microbe basically is a unicellular organism. So unicellular means that it has one cell. And examples of microbe is basically bacteria, fungi, prostis, viruses, and an archaea. So these are just examples of what a microbe is. You don't really have to know it for now. I think maybe the most important for now is just to know that um, the bacteria, because we're dealing with fermentation. So. Let's study a fermentation reaction to help you understand it. So the basic reaction in the fermentation process can be summarized as follows. Now, in some experiments, we have yeast contains enzymes that can break down glucose. So this experiment that I want you to do is where we're going to use yeast that contains certain enzymes. Now, remember I told you a reagent earlier on when I was uh, explaining the definition of fermentation to you. So we say a reagent is introduced into a, um, a compound to um, make new compounds, or it can be used to break down uh, certain elements or certain compounds. So we're using yeast to break down glucose. So when they add, so the glucose is the um, uh, the substance here, and when you add yeast, it breaks down into ethanol, alcohol, and carbon dioxide. Okay, so um, what I want you to just think about from yesterday's lesson, you can type it in the chat, and even though I have it written in a different way, who can tell me what the reactants are and what the products are in this glucose, where we have the RO, ethanol, and carbon dioxide. So, does anybody want to type in the chat what is a what is the reactant and what is the product? So I'll give you a clue if you're going to do that. I'll underline one, and then I'll underline the other. 
Okay, so in yesterday's lesson, we said when you added two things together, these were the reactants, and that was um, the result of adding the two things together that gave you a product, and that uh, the glucose here is the product. But we put it in a different way because in, in the fermentation process, we are adding yeast to break down the glucose. Okay, so you can draw molecules to show how the atoms are rearranged during a rea reaction. So you can either basically do it in this easy way, or you can do it in a difficult way where you can draw a molecule. So you can see that these, this compound here has lots of um, um, atoms to it and attached to it. So basically we can say for example, I'm just using the, this picture as an example. This is a glucose compound here. Okay. And then when it is broken down, it is broken up into ethanol alcohol and it is broken up into carbon dioxide. Okay. So that's how we had to draw it. So you could see there's a lot of particles all fused together and attracted to each other in the glucose. And then when we break it down, it is broken out into smaller compounds. So in the diagram uh, next to you on the right, on the left hand side, the gray atoms are basically the carbon atoms. So these gray atoms here are the carbon atoms if you look on the, in the diagram in the left. And then the red atoms are the oxygen atoms. And the small white ones are the hydrogen atoms. So if you had to write the names of the compounds in each reaction, so then you're going to write it like this. So you're going to say you have the carbon, and you can give it symbol. And then you can have the oxygen, and then you have the hydrogen. Okay. So now glucose does not change into ethanol and carbon dioxide by itself. So you can't change this glucose compound that we have just by itself. Okay, so we use microorganisms like yeast and bacteria, which actually ferment glucose. So we're adding a reagent. The reagent is um, the yeast to break down the glucose, and it gives you the ethanol, and it gives you the carbon dioxide. Okay. Um, we'll continue. So yeast produces special chemical enzyme, chemicals called enzymes that break down the bonds in sugars, such as glucose to form smaller molecules like alcohol and carbon dioxide. So basically what we're saying is that yeast, yeast was the reagent and it produces special chemical chemicals called enzymes. And these enzymes basically break down the bonds in sugars. So yeast has special chemical enzyme chemicals that are called enzymes. And these enzymes they break the bond in the sugar, which is glucose. And it breaks it into smaller molecules. So the, the small smaller molecules were basically the alcohol and the carbon dioxide. So if we look here, I'm just showing it to you in, in circles. We had a yeast here. So when we added basically ethanol, uh, uh, we added yeast into it, into this glucose. I'm trying to write yeast with my mouse pad. Please forgive me for the writing. So if we add yeast into it, then it breaks it down. So if we say yeast is a reagent, right? So it breaks it down into alcohol, or you could say that ethanol and carbon dioxide. Okay, so I, I made it a big circle and then small circles, but you must know that this is not the actual representation. I'm just showing it to you and how it is broken down. Now, in South Africa, the popular drink 
is basically ginger beer or pineapple beer. And the fizzy bu uh, bubbles in the ginger beer or the pineapple beer are bubbles of carbon dioxide produced by yeast during fermentation. So when you want to make pineapple beer or ginger beer, you must know that it has bubbles. And these bubbles are carbon dioxide. Um, and this carbon dioxide is produced by adding yeast to it during the fermentation process. So let's make some ginger beer together. You can actually also do it with your parents at home. So you, you need to research how some traditional South Africans made ginger beer to consume. To consume means to drink it. So you're going to identify the ingredients you would need. So when you're conducting research, you need to first identify you can Google it as well, and you're going to identify what ingredients do you need, like even if you're going to bake a cake. So you will first need to know what the ingredients are. You can't just start baking it because you need to know if you have all of those ingredients before you actually start making the cake, to, uh, um, uh, making the cake, or, or actually not making, baking the cake. So once you have done so, you can decide the best recipe. So now, when you were in the in younger grades, they taught you how to write a recipe, and the recipe was provide basically to show you how to structure things. So when you write a recipe, first you need to know the ingredients, and the most important thing for you to know why what the ingredients are is that you can't start doing something and then realize, oh, I don't have this, and then it stops the whole process immediately. You can't continue with making something because you don't have it. So when you have a list, it gives you a structure and, and you can pace your time out. OK, I have all of this. So that basically means what um, it is about. So I have a technical glitch again because my screen stopped sharing. So I'm going to try and reshare it. Okay. Yeah, so I was talking about recipes. And then you follow a method. So you can make ginger beer with basically your parents and you can ask them for help. So let's answer you. Um, you can do this at home, but you're going to know more about it by the questions and answers I'm going to give it to you. So I'm going to give you questions basically. And then I will put the answers. I don't expect you to know the answers because you haven't done the experiments. OK, so the first the questions are, what are the reactants in the reaction to make ginger beer? So this is basically what your ingredients would be. And the second question is, what is the product in the reaction that's taking place in the ginger beer? So if we add the two reactants, the reactants together, what the pro what result would we get? What product would we get? And then we're going to ask why were there fizzy bubbles in the ginger beer? So I explained earlier on why they were, but I'll discuss it again. Why were there fizzy bubbles in the ginger beer? And then you can ask yourself, where do you think that this gas comes from? So this this um, um, substance that made the bubbles fizzy, where did it come from? Okay, so let's do question one to four first, the answers, and then we'll proceed to question five. So what are the reactants in the reaction to make ginger beer? So the chemical reaction occurs between sugar. So one of the reactants is sugar and fermenting fruits, okay, and the yeast. So we're going to, the reactants would be, the, say, sugar and fruit. And then the fermenting would be the, the reagent that you're adding is the yeast to make a different compound. So the reactants are basically sugar and fruit. And an example could be basically um, the fruit you could use is ginger and raisins. Okay, so you're going to mix the ginger and you're going to mix the raisins with sugar. And then 
you're going to add yeast to it to ferment it to get your ginger beer. Okay, so I'll explain that again. So for the chemical reaction to occur between sugar and fermenting fruits and yeast, you need to get the reactants. So the reactants are the sugar and the fruit. And you, in this case, we used ginger and raisin. And then we added yeast. Yeast is um, uh, the reagent that ferments the sugar and the fruit. And the next question. What is the product in the react what is the product in the reaction taking place in the ginger beer? So that means what is the result of this fermentation? What's going to happen? To what product we're going to get? So the product that you're going to get is carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is a very small amount of alcohol. Okay. And then why are there fizzy bubbles in the ginger beer? So the ginger beer basically is the, the fizzy bubbles in the ginger beer. The fizzy bubbles is basically carbon dioxide gas. So this carbon dioxide gas is trapped in the liquid. Okay, so carbon dioxide gas is trapped into the liquid. And this basically is how ginger beer is formed because carbon dioxide forms in 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 this um, mixture of fruit and uh, sugar when you added the yeast and it became um, the carbon dioxide gets trapped in the liquid. Then you're going to ask where does this gas come from? So it comes when you react the yeast um, with the sugar and the fruit. So the carbon dioxide comes from reacting. The, um, when you mix the, the, the sugar and the fermented fruit together with the yeast, then you're going to get the chemical reaction and you're going to get that carbon dioxide gas. OK, so let's look at another practical example that you can or may, you may have seen. So another example of where you see a chemical reaction taking place is when we burn firewood. Okay, so either in your homes to cook. So sometimes when people are having brides and stuff, they don't use coal, they use wood. Or even in winter, in most, in some homes, they have a fireplace and then they burn. Um, um, especially in the colder countries, they they burn wood to keep their house warm. So the wood burns and it produces carbon dioxide. The wood is burning and it produces carbon dioxide, which is a gas, and then it also produces water vapor from the heat. OK, and you can ask yourself, what are the products and the reactants from this process of burning wood? OK, so your answer would be the reactants are the wood and the oxygen. So basically is what are you doing? So oxygen is mixing um, with the heat with the heat to burn the wood and then your reactants would be carbon dioxide and water. OK, so now let's use the volcano experiment. Chemical reactions can help us to detect certain substances. Now, if you visit this YouTube site, it will explain it very clearly to you how different substances are formed, like before and after. So some chemical reactions can produce results that are unique and even spectacular. Now, even though it's spectacular to watch a volcano uh, experiment, you must pray that it never happens because when a volcano erupts, you all know it's very dangerous because it produces that molten lava that basically destroys and kills everything. So you can watch this experiment in on this YouTube address here. Um, and you'll see um, basically uh, how the re chemical reaction um, is detected in certain substances. So I have these pictures here, but I'll explain the pictures just now to you. So when ammonia 
uh, dichromate burns in oxygen. So this here is this ammonia dichromate, and it is burned before. Okay. So a reaction produces bright orange sparks. So you get bright orange sparks when it is first reaction, reacting. And the reaction from nitrogen gas and water and a dark green compound called ammonia, uh, called chromide oxide are products. Now, this is a unique reaction. Now, the only ammonium dichroate reacts with oxygen to form a particular product with these uh, visual effects. So this ammonia here is before it is burnt in oxygen. So can you see the color? So when it reacts with all these fancy words that I mentioned here on top, um, you get this ammonia dichroate before it is burnt in oxygen. Actually, it should be after it is burnt in oxygen. Okay, so we're going to see when two substances react in a unique and characteristic way, when they are mixed, then they, um, one of them can be used to detect the other. So basically what this means is when we react two substances in a unique way, the characteristics are mixed in a, in, in, in a different way. And then when it's mixed, one of them can be used to detect the other. So we can have the before and the after. So please watch this YouTube video. It explains it very well. I'm not going to go too much into it. I just wanted to make you aware of how the reactions take place. But if you watch the video, it explains it excellently. I want so some chemical reactions from the, um, life and living. If you use lime water to detect it, to detect carbon dioxide in your breath. So this is an easy experiment. So what color is the lime water when you blew bubbles through it? So let's say if you had lime water here in this cup and you, you blew bubbles in this lime water. So they want to know what color did the lime water turn when you blew the bubbles? So it turned a milky white color. Okay, so a lime water is a solution of calcium hydroxide in water. Now the reactions occur between the lime water and the carbon dioxide to produce the white substance. So basically in the lime water, so a reaction occurs between the lime water and the carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is basically the gas that you blew into, uh, the bubbles that you blew into the water. And it produces that white substance, that white milky substance. And that white milky substance is called calcium carbonate. Okay, so I'll read it through to you just now uh, again. So the reactant for a reaction to occur when you blew carbon dioxide into lime water, it produced a white milky substance, and that white milky substance was um, uh, calcium carbonate. So today's lesson, we seem to be having lots of technical glitches, so I do apologize for that, and we'll try to solve the issue so we don't have a problem in our next lesson. So now we're going to say what are the reactants of the experiment? Uh, what are the reactants and the products in this reaction? So the reactants are lime water, and the fancy word for lime water is calcium hydroxide. Okay, so lime water is called calcium hydroxide. And calcium hydroxide is basically the product. Oh, sorry, it's calcium hydroxide and carbon dioxide. So the reactants are calcium hydroxide, which is lime water, and carbon dioxide. And the product is basically calcium carbonate and water. Okay, so we say that we use the color change of lime water to detect carbon dioxide in our breath. 
Now the carbon dioxide is a byproduct of the chemical reaction that takes place during respiration in our body. So we breathe in oxygen. So the oxygen goes into our lungs. So this is also a chemical reaction that's taking place. And then when you breathe in it, breathe, when you breathe out, then um, through the process of respiration, you are breathing out carbon dioxide. So you see chemical reactions are not only dealing with compounds that you're going to mix together, basically in real life living. So you're breathing in oxygen. Now that's also breathing out um, carbon dioxide. That's a um, reaction as well. It's a chemical reaction. So if we had to write out a word equation for respiration, it is basically glucose plus oxygen. And this glucose plus oxygen gives you energy, carbon dioxide, and water in the slime water um, reaction that we um, uh, experiment that we conducted now. So also in living and life, um, uh, you would maybe in earlier grades you would have spoke about ingredients of respiration um, as Okay, let me read this again. In living and life, you spoke about ingredients of respiration, as we had not yet learned the terms of reactants and products. So in earlier grades, you would have did this experiment, but you wouldn't have known what are the reactants and what are the products. Um, okay, so let's see in respiration what the reactants and what the products are. So the reactants are glucose and sugar, and then the products are energy, carbon dioxide, and water. So when we reacted glucose and sugar, you must know it didn't give you just one product, it gave you many products. So the product was energy because it gave off energy and it gave off carbon dioxide, and also it gave up water, but you don't see the water, it comes out in, um, uh, basically, you, you, um, uh, tiny droplets. Okay, so what are the reactants and products like in photosynthesis? I can give you an example. So the reactants are carbon dioxide and water, and the products that you get when you react in carbon dioxide and water in photosynthesis is glucose and oxygen. Okay, so when you react carbon dioxide, because you know plants breathe in, they take in carbon dioxide, and plants need water to grow, and then they give off glucose, and they give off oxygen, and then they use the glucose as their food. Okay, so we learned that chemical reactions are simple, simply rearrangements of atoms in molecules to make different molecules. And that is why many chemists do this for a living. So you find out ways of rearranging atoms in order to make new compounds. So scientists use the rearrangement of atoms to make new compounds basically every day to find new compounds, new medication, new ways of improving the way we live. So if you want to take up a career in chemistry and if you find this interesting, if you find science interesting and you want to learn more and you want to become an inventor and if you want to help build a better uh, uh, world together. So you can study when you grow later on agricultural chemistry, biochemistry, biotechnology, chemical education. You can also do teaching and lecturing. You could do research. You can become a researcher as well at a university. You can become a chemistry researcher. You can become an environmental, you can do environmental chemistry. That's like using plants and see how they react to uh, make more, uh, make medication that doesn't have side effects, like that's indigenous medication. You can do forensic science. You can become a food, you can study food science and technology to see how food, um, consumption reacts and how you can use technology to make new compounds. Then you can be a genetic. So there's lots of things that you can do over here. There's also patent law. 
zoology, space exploration, so science based oceanography, organic chemistry, medicine and medicinal chemistry, that's where they make medication. So there's a wide variety of careers that you can go into when you're studying science. So in this lesson, basically, we learned chemical reactions, materials are changed into new materials with new chemicals which make new chemical and physical properties. So the chemicals has changed and so has the physical property. The materials we start are called with the reactants and the new materials are called the products. And then during the chemical reaction, atoms are rearranged and this requires chemical bonds in the, react in the reactants are broken and new bonds are formed, which results in a product formation. And fermentation is a brewing, and the example of a chemical reaction that is part of indigenous knowledge. Okay, so um, we did that experiment with the ginger beer. So these are helpful links that you can go through. I use the CEO Viela's um, website to derive all this information, which is what the base Department of Education has used as well. And then useful links that will explain fermentation if you had difficulty, um, just to grasp the concept better. I gave you the terminology in words of how to explain it. And you can watch the video that shows you how it takes place. And um, this explains it to you because you can learn it visually and then how fermentation works as well. That's another video you can watch. Are there any questions that you need to ask me? You can write it on the chat. I will do a quick recap of this uh, on Tuesday. Then I will do the egg experiment that I gave you to do and then we'll um, continue and proceed to with our uh, introduction of our next lesson. Okay, so if you, um, we're going to do fermentation in chemical substances as well. So you're welcome to contact me on my email, which is ahaffea at gmail.com. And I hope to see you soon in our next lesson. Goodbye, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, it's a long weekend, so we're going to meet up on Tuesday on Teams. I'd like you to go. Okay. So our next lesson is going to be on Tuesday. The times are going to change. So um, please check the timetable on our website. To Our lesson, I think, is going to be at 9 o'clock um, on Tuesday, not at this time. So um, um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I hope that it benefited you. And I'll see you on Tuesday. Please don't forget to do the experiment. Okay, have a lovely weekend. Bye, everybody. Enjoy your day and weekend.